Do you want me to go for... Get in the water. Do you want me to say... <laughs> get in the water. <laughs> I don't want to get, get in the water. <laughs> You've all seen Meaty Tea, yeah? Uncle Steve, Big Yanny, and the little guy with the moustache. Well, they have teamed up with Weatherby to create this, the Weatherby Meat Eater. First impressions is it looks amazing. But what we want to know is, is it actually amazing? So when the big man himself, Steve Ronella, sat down with the gang and Weatherby to design this, their spec was simple. Accurate, affordable, durable, and just straight up cool. You don't have to be a rifle expert to understand that this rifle looks particularly cool. Black camo, tungsten Cerakote, spiral fluting, ooh, that's sweet. Affordable, in the UK, at least this is 1,200 pounds. In America, 1,000 bucks. It's a very affordable rifle. When you put it against all the other things on the market, it's actually, it punches quite high. It's a sweet thing. Durable, those who don't know about the Weatherby Vanguard should. It's the, one of the most simple and reliable actions made in Japan that ever was. They're good, they're accurate. You don't really need much more than that. It's gonna work every time, no frills. No frills is good when you're in the wilderness. You want a rifle that when you pull the trigger, the bullet comes out the end, right? Accurate. You'll see at the end, we went out and had some fun with this, but afterwards we actually sat down and had some shots on the range, actually went prone, actually paid attention, and we were putting in groups like that with a bit of attention. What more could you possibly want? This rifle comes with a one MOA or sub inch accuracy guarantee at 100 yards. Most rifles do nowadays, but it's nice to see a rifle that you can actually achieve that with without too much work. I shoot a lot of guns, I see a lot of people shoot a lot of guns. To actually shoot groups under an inch reliably takes some skill, takes a bit of fitting, takes a bit of time getting used to a rifle. To pick up any rifle and shoot a group like that, you takes a special and unique talent, which I don't have. So, let's look at it. What do you get? Because I do love this gun. Well, let's start at the back. It has a squishy plate. This particular rifle is chambered in 243. Having a nice recoil pad on there is gonna help because this guy goes all the way up pretty much from every caliber you could ever desire from 243, 65 calibers, PRC and Creedmoor, 308, 306, 270, 300 Win Mag, 300 Weatherby, and lots of things in between. If you're shooting this in 300 Win Mag, it's a fairly lightweight rifle you want some recoil reduction. It has a Monte Carlo stock with a raised cheek piece. This is gonna give you a, a superior cheek weld when you're actually on the rifle. So what it doesn't do is lend itself to 56 millimeter objectives. 56 millimeter objectives sit a little high, and as such, with a 40 or 42 to 44, this rifle cheek weld to eye relationship is gonna be perfect. And to be honest, most of the people buying this aren't gonna want a particularly big and heavy scope. It adds a lot of weight to the rifle. It's a fairly European thing. And this, well, predominantly is gonna be bought by Americans, except by English people who love meat eater and Europeans who love meat eater. Who doesn't love meat eater, right? On the bottom, there is, there's the money shot. Meat eater with the logo engraved into the tungsten Cerakote floor plate. It is not a detachable magazine rifle. I expect you could fit an aftermarket one if you so desired but the sort of situations you're gonna be buying and using this rifle for are not that. The grip is thin through the neck with a little palm swing on the bottom. It fits comfortably in the hand, although it probably is designed for gloves or smaller hands than mine. That glove round there is gonna be nice, but it's not too small that you can't get to grips with it just with a normal hand. The bolt handle is knurled. The bolt is made of one piece of steel. It's a nice thing. You've got a couple of flutes running down there. It's a nicely finished article. The safety is three position. Back for super safe, front for safe, but you can open the bolt and take a cartridge out. Or forward for bang. The rifle action is relatively unexciting, but it is tungsten Cerakote to match the number two contour spiral fluted barrel. Spiral fluting is about one of the coolest things you can do to any gun. The end. It looks amazing. It, it just looks cool. The actual practical applications, you've increased surface area, heat dispersion, you've removed some weight out of the barrel whilst keeping a bit of weight in there, adding some strength. I mean, that's it really. But mostly, it looks really cool. 
It is screw cut. This one is fitted with an Evolve moderator, but it is screw cut in half by 28 TPI. And you can actually buy a muzzle brake specifically for this gun, although most people in the UK will probably just buy a moderator because that's just what we do nowadays, clearly. Because it's not hard in England for those American fans who are watching. The two stage match trigger has quite a lot to take up. And then about a two pound, two and a quarter pound break on this one we measured it at. It's nice, it's crisp, there's no creep. It's just a perfect workhorse trigger. You can turn it up lighter, you can turn it heavy, you can adjust it, it's adjustable. Bear in mind that if you take this rifle out of the stock, it's a pressure bedded gun. Pressure bedding means you've got to put it back into the correct torque settings. That is 35 on the back screw first, that is inch pounds and 35 on the front thereafter. If you don't do this, this rifle will not be accurate. That is the point of pressure bedding. That means it's a not a fully floating barrel. This is slightly more rugged, slightly more reliable, slightly less changeable in extreme conditions, and well, suits the rifle down to the ground. Would it have been nice to see this rifle with a full aluminium bedding block and fully fruit floating barrel? Yes, would that have meant this rifle is 1,200 pounds with all of the features that it's got? No, it doesn't. I believe they do a big boy version of this that is more money and has way more features, but this setup is designed as a workhorse. No frills, not anything too exciting, but it looks, it looks like a five grand rifle. And that could confuse a few people because it's not a 5,000 pound rifle, it just looks like one. So I shot this rifle with a professional gamekeeper friend of mine a few days ago. Come, see how we got on. Miss the kick in the big game, pay on my driving chest. So, you use rifles every day, mate? Yeah? What do you make of that? Looks cool. It looks exceptionally cool. Doesn't it? We've got camo, we've got a spiralling fluted barrel. It's Cerakoted, so Cerakoted. you rust it to death. We've got meat eater on the bottom of it. We've all watched yeah, meat here, right? Pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. No, it looks really nice, mate. Feels all right, the bolt feels cool. It handles nice in the hand. It's very skinny on the pistol grip, I, I think it's say. designed for gloves. Yeah. That's my theory on that. Like, this is obviously designed to be shot all over the world, probably predominantly in America, by meat eater fans in America. And but we've got two meat eater fans here, so should we go and give it a shot and see if it can actually uh, hands, do what right? it's meant to do? Yeah. Because it looks cool, as long as it works right, mate. Yeah, because think... no one cares if it looks cool, if it shoots a bad group. Let's go and see if it does then, eh? Let's see how we get on. Have you got a Spartan bipod as well? It's basically, we're on meat eater right now. I know. And there's something about that clunk you get when you put them in, isn't there? It's a very nice fit. I know. It's a very nice fit. Right. What are we having on it, mate? I live on in your court. Everything I'm thinking is inappropriate. You live locally, so taking a dip in the drink is inappropriate for me. But I do have spare clothes in the car. Well, that sounds like a challenge accepted, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Dip in okay. the drink. Best what? group. Best group. I, I mean, what are we talking in terms of, of wetness? I think you've got to go up to knee level. I mean, I know that's considerably further out for you, <laughs> mate, than it is for me, but <laughs> knee level seems fine. At least then. A shallow puddle for you. <laughs> at least then we can, you know, prove that we've gone to the knee. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, problem is if I lose, I really don't want to go up to Manacas in, in the brown water. But because the ducks have been pooping in there, mate, it will help you to grow even more. So you might get to seven foot eventually, like didn't you've always like, dreamed didn't of. Didn't five people die in there 150 years ago? The Canadian soldiers, mate, and it was the winter time when it was frozen. So it's summertime. You're probably taller than all them lads put together. So okay. I think you'd be all right. Mike Hell. Which target? Uh, top, work your way down. Well, I think you may have pulled one slightly. Are we going to go look now I've shot, or are you going to shoot? Oh, we're just shooting now. Well, that's the first shot. You've already had a practice, mate. I'm trying to give you a leg up here. No. Like, normally, you know, you're nice to me, and you do really nice stuff for me on the clay tour. I was feeling like I would be nice to you. Mate, I don't need any favours. I only want you to not bitch a moment when you're in the water. And that you probably <laughs> actually go in there to bath. Because you're all shit. <laughs> that's just what you do. Have some more shots. Have a shot. What do you think? What do you think? I tell you what, mate, the trigger, very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You've got a little bit of take up on it, 
not too much pressure once you have taken it up to get it away, but enough to know that you are positively pulling the trigger. And it's clean as well. It's, it's a nice break. It's no crisp creep, break. Really. There's very a very crisp. crisp break, yeah. The bolt's real nice and smooth. If you were Mouflona in, let's say, and shooting a Mouflona running across that field and you wanted to keep that bolt working, mate, it's very smooth. Picks up the bullets nicely out of the chamber to chamber them. Yeah. Cool, I think more. Put a decent group in, let's see. Well, are we Should we go and have a look? So I've gone first target. I think you should shoot second target, and then Sasha should be the one to walk down there and see what, what's what. You, you trust him? Gonna kill me. You trust him? Yeah. I trust Sash. What did you? You went off early for fifteen minutes. Oh, here we go. Now we're now we're finding out the truth of it. He's trying to make <laughs> excuses up. Thought he didn't want a handicap. Come on then. Get on it. Show me how it's done. You're not having my, you're not having my deer hunter moss padded jacket. Okay. You can use your own stuff. Okay. No, you can have it. Thanks, mate. I'll shoot it from the hip. Still shoot a better group than you. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah, boy. Mr. Carter, let's see. Let's see. You have to put this on so I can like gain the essence. You'll never fit it, mate. I could borrow my little brother's jacket like you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to use this instead for the heel plate. I'm going to use it as an uh, extender because this gun is designed for you. Yeah. I don't, how cool is Stephen? Uh, must be you're right. He's not massively tall. Yeah, he's probably quite. He's quite a good-looking gentleman. So I would have said he's probably my size. Yeah. No, nowhere near six foot. I'm going to laugh my nipples off when you make a balls of this, Mr. Carter. Oh no, that looks no, like... No, it was pretty bad, actually. No, I say, that yeah, looked pretty, pretty bad. bad to me. That looked a bit yeah. snatchy. It's fine. I haven't lost yet. Oh, can you see mine from there? Oh yeah. And can you see yours? It's a very good group. Is it? Yours, yeah. Is it? You're such a handsome man. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> no, just shut up, you old sport. Sorry, right? sorry. It's the COVID. Yeah. Ooh, fish, trout. <laughs> did you see the trout? You know, yes, the trout. Did. Yeah, brown trout, lovely. Nice to see, isn't it? <laughs> We've brought them back to these pairs since I've been here. The conservation is real. This is it, the conservation is real, mate. Good job it's not a fox, mate. <laughs> it's gone by now. <laughs> It'd be way gone by now. <laughs> 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 Oh, give me a minute. <laughs> I didn't even say anything that time, did I? I was sat quiet, I was waiting for you to take your shot and he stepped away from the competition. All right, hold on. Are you retiring? No, I'm not retiring. I just, I was waiting, I was about to pull the trigger and I was waiting for you to talk. I was like, he's going to talk. He's going to talk. Wait for him to say something, then I'll release it. And you didn't say anything. No, well, I had a little bit of a phone call. We had Solomon to work out these mind games, mate. I know exactly how they work now. Well, Sasha, my old China. Let's see, we go and have a look. Yeah. Woo! That's close, mate. Have you got a measuring tape? <laughs> or are we going on numbers? Oh, no, we're not scoring it. The whole point is a group. We discussed a group. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could measure it on a piece of grass, and it's the, the widest point in the group, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm so, you're saying that because two of mine are obviously touching. And none of yours are, but then one of mine's a bit straight, which very I did strange say. touching because there's <laughs> it's like a ten millimeter thing in between, isn't it? Ten. That's a, you're exaggerating. Come on. Now I know why Charlie says you, <laughs> you say right, we say. So the two that are furthest apart are those two. Yeah, you agreed? No, no, clearly these two. No, they're close enough to those two. I would say furthest apart. Well, I know that one's going to be further apart. How far is that? On the grass. To About my an inch of grass. Fingernail. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Fata Carter has won. You did have a practice round, mate. Go on, then. So if Go I have, again, bitch, boy. if I have three Go more at this one, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And fine. then and then I'll be like, but yeah, you've had two competitive goes, so I want two competitive goes because no, well, competition just... is different to practice. Well, uh, you know, I'll just have. Do you want me to go for get in the water? Do you want me to say <laughs> get in the water? <laughs> I don't want to get, get in the water. water. <laughs> Are you calling that the you've won? Fine. Right. Like, can't shoot another group. I can't. No, I'm going to go fine. in the water. Come on. See you later, Johnny. <laughs> and on that bombshell, back to the studio. So we're going to get a slightly different conclusion today. I'm going to give you five reasons to buy this rifle before I actually conclude it. Number one, it's Cerakoted. Most of the rifles I've seen sold to professionals and even semi-professional stalkers do not get looked after as they should. That means rust. Rust is bad. You could own this rifle and just a pull through and it would keep going forever. That Cerakote is such a nice touch. Number two, it looks a million bucks. It looks about, it looks about five grand's worth of rifle in my head. 
That is, it's cool. Nobody, who wants a boring looking gun? This looks really amazing. That is a genuine reason to buy it. Number three, you can support Meat Eater. I understand that it's now free on YouTube and you can get some of it on Netflix that you pay for. But if you actually want to support some of the brands that you love, sometimes that means putting your hand in your pocket and buying a product that they endorse because this obviously is going to help Meat Eater out, continue to make their amazing show that we all love. And to be honest, who doesn't want to be part of that brand? It's an amazing brand and this rifle kind of sums up to people like me who, who love it, who aren't too worried about like the, the tech and the geekery inside the rifle. It is a very technically competent rifle who wants something that looks cool and is gonna just shoot deer and whatever else you might end up shooting with your weathering meat eater. And my final point, when brands collab, it can go wrong in so many ways. The concept that two people can get together and actually produce something good, not just a, a thing designed by committee, is awesome. We see so many things, they go, yeah, let's put an orange bolt knob on it and we're gonna sell it for 10 grand more. This isn't that. This is actually an amazingly affordable, cool package that anybody can like and enjoy, regardless whether you like Meat Eater or not, that has the Meat Eater soul and is still just a Weatherby. And both of those things is amazing. I love it. I, I actually love it. I understand that this might not appeal to those who are after super technical specs and there might be wiser options for certain things. But this rifle isn't for the wiser option gang. It's for the, I want a rifle that is accurate, durable, affordable, and just downright cool. Uh, I don't even want to hear this. Could we do that one more time? <laughs>